this is the session on distributed systems, and the first talk in the session is going to be given by Ray, who's going to talk about a turnkey way to implement Paxos replication. Um, thank you, Marcos, for the introduction. Um, hello, uh, my name is Ray Gu from Columbia University. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, talk about our state machine replication system, Crane. Crane can replicate general server programs for fault tolerance transparently without any modifications on these programs. This is a joint work uh, with my colleagues He Ming, Cheng, Tian Yu, and our our advisor Junfeng. Nowadays, people incorporate different online services into their lives, including uh, social network, webmail, cloud storage, etc. The fundamental building blocks of these services are uh, server programs. These server programs include database server, antivirus server, web server, etc. Because we depend on these services, we want them online 24-7. As a result, the availability of these underlying server programs are crucial. So, how do we achieve availability for a general server program? The answer is state machine replication, which is a conceptual idea that are used to implement a wide range of fault tolerance systems. This conceptual idea is simple and contains only three key ingredients. First, people implement their service program as deterministic state machines. Deterministic state machine uh, means from any system state, the system will always have the same behavior if the inputs are the same. Second, people replicate their server program on different machines. The word replicate means running the same server program instance on different physical machines. The third one is to make sure all the replicas receive the exact same input. By saying the same input, we usually mean the same sequence of client requests, including their order. Typically, we leverage a distributed consensus protocol, Paxos, to achieve this. For this protocol to work, we we'll also need to define a consensus interface. You can view the consensus interface as the input interface of our program. As a result, all the consistent input will make sure the state machines go through the same state transitions, thus provide the same output. Even if one node fails, the system can still work properly uh, as long as the majority of the nodes is fine. Suppose you have a server program and used by a lot of people. Now you want to use SMR to increase availability. What should you do? First, you need an input consensus interface to make sure every replication sees the same input. You could build your own SMR system that contains this. However, implementing a practical distributed protocol Paxos is not trivial. There are many research papers trying to build a practical Paxos. Even more, after you build it, you have to make sure it's bug-free, and distributed protocol implementations are notorious for bugs. Many other research work has shown that even widely used Paxos imp implementations have a lot of bugs, and uh, they are really hard to get right. You can also use existing SMR systems. There are two popular ones here, Zookeeper and Chubby. However, they're using either lock interfaces or file I.O. interfaces. Shoehorn your existing program into these interfaces could be time consuming and error prone. Second, SMR requires your, requires your server to be a deterministic state machine in order to prevent the execution states from diverging. Nowadays, almost all server programs are multi-threaded, which is non-deterministic. How do you make uh, the server program deterministic? After all the previous questions, people may want to ask, what's an ideal state machine replication system that solves all the previously mentioned problems? The system should take any general server programs as a black box and provide transparent replication service. Transparent means 
a server program just run on top of the, the system without any modification. Developers only need to focus on their own server implementation instead of replication. People don't have to worry about any SMR-related protocols or implementations. The SMR system itself will handle the rest. That's exactly our system do. Here, I'd like to propose our system, Crane, which provides a transparent state machine replication service. People plug in their server as a black box and get replication automatically. Crane will run as a container and handles all the details of replication. Let developers focus on their own services. As a transparent SMR system, Crane achieves availability, transparency at the same time. Here, I'd like to talk some key challenges that Crane face to, it, to make SMR saves transparent. The first challenge is making a transparent state machine replication consensus interface. Using existing SMR systems require developers to shoehorn their implementation into those interfaces, which can be time consuming and error prone. To address this challenge, Crane creates a socket level consensus interface compatible to standard POSIX uh, socket APIs, which are used by many general server programs. Crane's Paxos consensus protocol ensures that all replicas of server programs sees the same order of socket calls issued by the clients. The second challenge comes from the non-determinism of multi-threading, which breaks the deterministic assumption of state machine replication. Different thread schedules can easily cause uh, execution states to diverge. To address this challenge, Crane leverage deterministic multi-threading to ensure the same thread scheduling across replicas. Let me first give you some background about uh, deterministic multi-threading, which in short is DMT. Conceptually, DMT maintains a global monotonically increasing logical clock that it would tick on each inter-thread communications, such as mutex locks. The logic clock number is shown on the left. This is the thread interleaving or schedule DMT enforces. By assigning a logical clock value to each inter-thread communication, DMT serializes this communication and enforces the same schedule on the same input. Meanwhile, since most code is not inter-thread communication, this code can still run in parallel. Crane leverages our previous DMT system, Parrot, which schedules a deterministic order of P-thread synchronizations at runtime. Parrot works with default program executable and requires no modification on programs. The overhead of Parrot is merely 12% on a wide range of more than 100 pro, uh, popular programs. Simply combining Paxos and DMT is not enough. The actual arriving time of inputs on each replica may still cause executions to diverge. Let me use a very simple example to demonstrate. Let's say Apache web server use a backend storage system to store the credit of a union. People send requests to modify the balance. There are two types of requests. The first type is an init balance request, which will initialize the whole balance to zero. The second type is an add request, which will add one credit to the balance. One day, there are two concurrently ar arrived send socket calls that modify the balance of the account. The sequence in the lower left corner shows the input after being processed by the consensus module. Let's say we use an efficient Paxos protocol, which has a primary replica to evoke consensus on inputs. The other replicas serve as backups, and they agree on the inputs. Now, let's look at machine one, which is the primary. The add request arrives late due to a network delay. However, on machine two, which is the backup, the request almost comes at the same time. The DMT scheduler on machine one 
will schedule two requests sequentially. As a result, the final balance is one. However, on machine two, since two requests come in one first, the DMT scheduler will schedule the operations side by side as shown on the right. As a result, the final balance on machine two is zero and two replicas diverge. In short, the arrival times of the add request are different on two replicas, causing different DMT schedules and different results. To address this challenge, researchers have proposed several inspiring approaches. These approaches have strong prom uh, promising results, but they, are, they have limitations in either efficiency, transparency, and reliability. The first approach is record and replay. This approach records a partially ordered schedule of p synchronizations on one replica and replace it on the other replicas. However, recording and transferring traces across replicas may incur high bandwidth consumption and performance slowdown. The second approach is execute then verify. This approach first executes a batch of requests speculatively and concurrently. It then verifies whether these requests have conflicts that will cause execution states to diverge. If so, it will roll back the program to a state before executing these requests and re-execute them sequentially. <laughs> However, it requires developers to manually annotate all the shared states, which could be time consuming and error prone. The third approach also leverages DMT to build SMR. This approach uses two phase commit approach to determine the logical admission time across replicas for each request. However, two-phase commit could handle primary failures. Moreover, determining a logical clock across replicas for each request may be slow. Now, I will use the same example to show how our time bubble technique handles the input timing challenge. In this example, we still have the init request comes first and there is a delay for the following requests. However, this time, DMT scheduler will block because both machines didn't get any incoming request. After a certain threshold, the primary will insert a time bubble to make sure all replica wait for the same amount of deterministic logical time. During the wait, DMT only scheduled already accepted requests. As a result, when the next burst comes, the first re re request in this burst will be scheduled as a consistent DMT logical clock across re all replicas. In summary, uh, the primary divides request into two bursts if there is a delay and ensures that the logical admission times of the following request in the next burst are consistent across replicas. Compared to the previous approach, which do per request consensus on the DMT logical admission time of each request. Our technique is more efficient because it does consensus on logical clocks only on the first request of each burst, which is actually a per burst consensus. Our evaluation confirmed the efficiency of the technique as we observed the frequency of time bubble insertion is often low. We'll, uh, we'll show these numbers on a later slide. In addition to addressing the previously mentioned challenges, to achieve practical transparent replication, Cream must provide a transparent checkpoint and recovery mechanism. To checkpoint the server program's process states, we leverage CRIU. To checkpoint the server program's backend storage, we use LXC. For more details on how we implement this mechanism, please refer to our paper. Now, I'd like to present our evaluation on Crane. We use three machines as replicas. Each of them has 12 cores with hyper-threading. We have evaluated five servers running on Crane with popular performance benchmarks. The benchmark program runs on another dedicated machine in local area network. And we measure response times. For each server, we use eight to 12 threads to enable its peak performance. We want to answer the following questions in the evaluation part. First, is Crane easy to use? Second, what's Crane's performance overhead?
compared to the unreplicated non-determinist native executions. Third, how well does carrying Paxos component handle replica failures? During our evaluation, all five servers were able to run in Kareem without any modification. This is the key goal of our system. Without Kareem, to the best of our knowledge, no existing state machine replication system can replicate this server without modifying them. This figure shows the server's performance normalized by their unreplicated native executions. The X axis is program names, and the Y axis is normalized response time. The lower bar, the better. 100% means Korean runs as fast as the native execution. This blue bar shows Korean's performance. In general, the overhead is pretty moderate, except for MySQL. In order to take a detailed look at Korean's performance um, and overhead, we evaluate each Korean's component separately. The red bar shows why only the DMT component is invoked. Combining these two bars, we can see that Korean's performance mainly depends on the DMT scheduler's performance. For the CLAM AV program, Korean has a slight speed up because our DMT scheduler is highly optimized for multi-core and saves a lot of context switches. For MySQL, it does intensive P-thread synchronizations within a short response time, causing DMT slow schedule. The green bar shows the performance when only the Paxos compo consensus component is invoked. This part invoked roughly 1% to 3.5% overhead, which is quite small because the number of socket calls is, mu is much smaller than the number of uh, P-thread synchronizations in these programs. The time bubbling technique saves the frequent needs of invoking consensus on the DMT logical admission time for each request. We did an experiment on measuring the frequency of inserting a time bubble for our performance benchmarks. The second column it's the number of issued client socket calls by the client. These numbers vary because every benchmark does different number of send socket calls in each request. The third column is the number of time bubbles inserted. All these socket calls and time bubbles go through Paxos consensus. The last column is the ratio of inserted time bubbles. And these ratio are low except for the MediaTOM media server. MediaTOM has uh, over 33% inserted time bubbles because each request transcode a big video which triggered a frequent insertion of time bubbles. For efficiency, Crane's Paxos protocol has a primary to invoke consensus on inputs. The other replicas are backup and they agree upon the inputs. To evaluate how well Crane's Paxos protocol handles replica failure and recovery, we created two failure scenarios. In the first scenario, we manually killed the primary replica running a Mongoose server. In total, the leader election process takes about 1.97 milliseconds to finish. In the second scenario, we manually killed the backup. We observed that the performance impact uh, was neg negligible because the other two replicas still form the majority and risk consensus fast. Crane is a promising first step towards building a transparent state machine replication system. However, there are still opening challenges. Here, I'd like to briefly talk about Crane's limitations. The first one is that Crane may have performance slowdown if servers do intensive P-thread synchronizations within a small amount of time. MySQL is one such example. This slowdown is mainly caused by the DMT scheduler. Although Parrot is the fastest DMT scheduler we know so far. Crane also leverages, leverages a few, uh, Crane also makes a few assumptions on the server programs. First, the program should use standard POSIX socket APIs so that our consensus interface can capture the network inputs. Second, the server should use P-thread synchronizations to synchronize among threads because our DMT scheduler, Parrot, is designed to interact such 
interact with such synchronizations. For example, Parrot is not able to intercept ad hoc synchronizations. Previous on automatically annotating ad hoc synchronizations may be leveraged to address this limitation. Now, we conclude. In this talk, we present Crane, a transparent state machine replication system. Crane does consensus on socket calls and leverage DMT system to mitigate thread non-determinism. Crane also efficiently addressed the input timing problem using our time bubble technique. All the source code, benchmarks, and evaluation results are available online. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Now the time is left for your for Q questions. Atuladia, Google. Um, I had a question about determinism. So you've taken some approaches to make your code more deterministic. But many years ago, we uh, wrote a distributed file system in which we ran into a whole bunch of issues regarding it. And one of them was we were single-threaded, but our algorithm was non-deterministic. We did not write a non-deterministic algorithm, but the quick sort we were using was uh, not stable. And for the same keys, it would sort in a different way on Windows 2000 and Windows XP. So, and we have lots of war stories like these. So my question is, you've taken care of some of the known deterministic issues. What do you do about the unknown unknowns? Right? How do you deal with those? So uh, the question is, our system only deals uh, certain non-determinism introduced, and there are some other non-determinism. So, um, <laughs> so I think this is a orthogonal uh, question to our approaches, because other systems like DMT could handle some non-determinism introduced by uh, device uh, ran random and uh, and some some timing uh, some read, uh, read times from some places. And I think other systems could handle this, but uh, in our system, we focus on the two main uh, issues in introduced by thread uh, interleaving and uh, uh, the, in in the inputs. But uh, yeah. So, so you don't handle the non-determinants introduced by the algorithm? Correct? Yes, but uh, yeah. Okay. Henry Ching from Stanford University. In section 7.6 uh, in your evaluation, you talk about a scenario where you restart a uh, backup replica and then, uh, yes, this scenario. What is the actual time for recovering the data, uh, getting your logs up to date after the initial restart of the primary? So, um, so the question is, what's the actual restart time after the primary fails and uh, uh, the, the next uh, primary <coughs> starts to work. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so, so basically, uh, like, like we showed here, it takes well, about 1.97 milliseconds for our benchmarks, including the logs, uh, to, to work, to, to, to update. Sorry, to clarification. Update. Um, I'm asking about how long it takes for the restarted primary to be fully caught up with the Oh, oh okay, log. okay. So, uh, so right, uh, actually we measure the time, it takes the, so the restart primary will downgrade to a replica, right? So it takes about a couple of uh, hundreds of milliseconds in our evaluation. Okay. So it's Thank really you. small. Thanks for the question. <laughs> sure. All right, thanks. <laughs> 